Well, the Nintendo Direct is in 30 minutes, and I gotta tell you, I am so excited. I'm so ready for the February Nintendo Direct. I've just been thinking about what I want, and I think I've managed to summarize it to just a couple of things. Okay, ready? Here we go. Tomodachi Life 2, Tomodachi Life 2, Tomodachi Life 2, Tomodachi Life 2, Tomodachi Life 2 again, Tomodachi Life 3, Tomodachi Life 2, Tomodachi Life 2, Tomodachi Life 2. The Nintendo Direct was... Um, pretty good, actually. So here's how this is gonna work. I watched this month's Nintendo Direct. Shocking. I'm gonna try and summarize the thoughts and feelings I had while watching the Direct in a way that hopefully makes someone out there chuckle. I'll try and cover most of it, but there are definitely a few trailers in here that had me choose to contemplate existence and the meaning of everything instead of watch. So if your most anticipated release of 2023 just isn't shown here, I'm sorry. I'm sure we'll get off to a pretty light start. I'll save the big announcements for like the first five minutes or something. I don't think they want to shock us first thing. Oh my God, that is Pikmin 4. I've never really played too much of a Pikmin series. I tried a bit of free deluxe and did enjoy it. I just put it down to focus on other games, but it's Pikmin 4. This game being soft announced and then never heard from again is just gaming heritage at this point. I can't help but be excited. And is it just me? Or does this look a lot more open than other Pikmin games? Maybe I'm just imagining it, but a lot of the shots in there look a lot more open compared to Pikmin 3. Not trying to imply it's fully open world, but that would be kind of cool. Oh, and it seems like they're teasing night exploration, which is a really cool concept. I too get blood red eyes during the night, so thank you, Nintendo, for the representation. And straight back to reality with Xenoblade Chronicles 3 DLC. Nintendo, nothing you could do will ever convince me to pick Xenoblade 2 back up. Now, this is my thing. Samba de Amigo is back. I've never played it, but since it has a Battle Royale mode, this is very clearly the greatest video game of all time, and I will be there no matter what. I played this trailer, and at first glance, I thought it was a new Star Boutique game. I then sat there for the next two minutes, never once understanding what the gameplay was or what to do in this game. I could have done my doctorate instead of this. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's on the Nintendo Switch, you f***ing idiot. We get another look at Bayonetta Origins, a game I already talked about in my world-renowned reaction to the Game Awards 2022. It looks pretty neat, but as someone who's not personally invested into the Bayonetta franchise... Uh, do I even like video games? I promise you, I get better at this soon, but it just feels like I'd rather start with a traditional Bayo game as opposed to this. Alright, next up we have... Remember how I said I was going to see more invested into franchises soon? Dylan Bruckhoats Cox, you are charged with numerous fraudulent investments and tax write-offs to generate money for silly squid creature related purchases. What is your defense? I will do it all again. <sighs> I'm going to try and stay composed during this segment. Splatoon 3 DLC, ah! ah! We already knew it was going to be a major story expansion that focused on Splatoon 2's idol characters, Pearl and Marina. This was known. I already frothed and giggled over it. No big deal, I promise. But what we didn't know is that there were two waves. And wave one is a return to Incopolis. It's literally just Incopolis with not much else new. And Sheldon has children. Wave one is a little so disappointing? No? Yes? Maybe? I'm confused. Like, on paper, this is basically a reskin of the current plaza that lets you access all the same services and features, just with Splatoon 1's original plaza. It's even got Callie and Maria's idols again. That's really cool, but it's not really new. The closest thing we even get to new are these new shop owners, and they're not even that cool. Except for you, Annie. I love you. But at the same time, this was never promised to us. I thought we were just getting an Octo Expansion level DLC and nothing more. So anything else on top of that, like this, is sort of a bonus I'm ultimately satisfied with. I said all of that about a Wii U asset flip. Imagine what I'll say about the actual story DLC. King Christ. So little was shown, but... But, but so much happened! We can see this is clearly in Coppola Square, the plaza from the second game, but... <laughs> well, I'm not gonna say it. We get these flashes of various images and drawings, which is like... Actually creepy as f***. One thing is for sure though, this is definitely Pearl, and this is definitely Marina, so I'm one satisfied customer. I also think slash believe slash hope slash know that the Octolink shown here is the same Agent 8 from the Octo Expansion DLC in Splatoon 2. So I, I'm feeling normal about this DLC. Fire Emblem Expansion Pass made me make one of my greatest ever purchases. This right here 
is a weighted blanket. It puts pressure on you while you sleep, which feels incredibly satisfying to some, including me, and it helped me sleep through the segment of the Direct. Thank god I set my alarm to wake up for Advance Wars 1 plus 2. Wait, how long was I asleep? This game was revealed in 2021. So here's the deal. This game was revealed at E3 2021 with a release date of April 2022. But by the time that had rolled around, some not so nice real world events cropped up that kind of clashed with the game's general theming, so Nintendo announced that it would be delayed to try and avoid that. The Advance Wars 1 plus 2 reboot camp game is only a couple a couple of months away. A couple of months? A couple of months? Nintendo, 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 Nintendo. You've been sitting slash working on this game since June of 2021. In reality, we're only like two months out from a drop now, thank God. But at least we've got some Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe to sink our teeth into, showing off a new epilogue based around Magalore. Not too familiar with Kirby lore, but putting an entirely new story into your remaster a la Bowser's Fury is always a plus from me. Good job, Nintendo. There's also a demo available right after the Direct, which is strange. You wouldn't expect a release like this to be hit with the- This game is less than two weeks away, and no one was gonna tell me? I am gonna be so broke after this direct is over. Perfect timing! Yeah. They've been working on this for a while, haven't they? Game Boy Online for Nintendo Switch Online. The emulation quality looks good, there's three colour filters for us to choose from, and they included Game Boy Colour games too, forever ending with debate that they're separate consoles. And... Oh! Game Boy Advance Online is coming at the same time! I genuinely didn't expect that! I thought they tried to drip feed us GBA Online as opposed to dropping it right here and now. That's great! It does feel surreal though. Just over four years removed from the announcement of NES Online, and now we've realistically only got one left. GameCube Online. Yeah, I mean, they could make a Wii and Wii U Online, but be real with yourself. This thing struggled to swallow N64 emulation in 2022. What makes you think it's going to be able to run a Wii U game? Ignore that. Alright, into a sizzle reel now. Expect it to be fair. We've been getting some big announcements up until now. That is one Metroid Prime Remastered, alright. Explore Talon 4 from the perspective of Samus Aran. Oh man, I wanted it from the perspective of Metroid. Out of nowhere, this game decides to rear its head. This has been rumored for a while now. A full remaster of the original Metroid Prime to tide us over until Prime 4 drops, but Wow, I, I mean, this is stuff of legend. I didn't think this was real. And it looks good. Like, really good. It shadow dropped after the event on the eShop for $40. That is some good pricing for a top quality remaster. Thank you, Nintendo. Wow, only five minutes left already. And no word on the Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. I know there'll be a trailer later on in hindsight, but am I the only one starting to get genuinely concerned for how little we're seeing from this game so far? But yeah, whatever. Might just be a me thing. Back to the direct. Professor Layton isn't dead? I thought this series was dead in the water after the developers seemingly folded, but... No! I am excited to see what comes next from a Layton series. Thank god it's still got some life in it. Unlike me, who saw they were adding Birdo to Marika 8 Deluxe and promptly died. Oh my god. This is a bigger deal than I think most have realised. We got a new trailer for Marika 8 Deluxe's booster course, specifically Wave 4 of the DLC. We're over halfway and they're adding Birdo a new playable character on top of the 48 additional tracks we're receiving in the DLC. That's a lot. It's so much that I think we're hitting the stage where Mario Kart 8 Deluxe should be considered the greatest Mario Kart of all time. Alright, yeah, yeah, I know, bold statement, but think about it. Decent character roster, good driving controls, a great item roster that was only further improved on with the ability to toggle off coins from item boxes, 50, 100, 150, mirror and 200 CC, 10 base cups including the DLC from the original Mario Kart 8, the improved battle mode, and now the 48 equals DLC pack plus the potential to expand and improve the character roster from here on out. Imagine if we got Funky Kong, or Diddy Kong, or Cranky Kong, or Kitty Kong, or Dixie Kong. I think my dream Mario Kart roster is entirely made up of Kongs. Regardless, the implications of this edition have me very excited to say the least. Now if you excuse me, I have to go pray for Funky Kong. One more sizzle reel before the final trailer. An extended look at The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. I mean, a look at The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Okay, sit down for this one. I needed a deep dive from this game. I needed a five minute trailer. And I don't say that to imply, oh, I have a god given right to see this game right now. I mean, 
I needed a 5 plus minute deep dive to get hooked. Because despite the first trailer showing so much new stuff to do, a ton of the sky stuff to explore, Link's cool new outfit, this trailer was kind of lame in comparison. I don't know what I was expecting, but there are a ton of environments here that I've seen so many times before in Breath of the Wild. I mean, yeah, it's to be expected, I sunk 300 hours into this game, but still, we still don't know what this mysterious new hand thing is about, but we just randomly got shown that you can make Cars? It was this shot right here that really raised some red flags in my mind, because I could barely tell that it wasn't footage from Breath of the Wild. Now, don't get me wrong, I know this is always going to be heavily based on the Breath of the Wild map and assets, but seeing how we're realistically a good five years into development at this point, and I'm still not entirely sure what this game is going to be, that's concerning. Considering this is a sequel to one of my top three games of all time, this entire trailer has me worried. But am I still dropping $70 on this game to pre-order it from a Nintendo Switch? Nope, not picking up this game. We'll never pick up this game. Won't touch it with a 70 feet pole. One foot for every dollar. What did I think of this direct overall? Pretty good, actually. You can definitely tell we're reaching the twilight years of the Nintendo Switch now, entering year six of 122 million units sold. I think it's natural to see Nintendo start to slow down on the big releases. Because ultimately, they're probably all being saved for the next Nintendo console. Like, I want a new 3D Mario so badly, but I know I'll probably have to wait for the Switch 2 or the Switch successor to get it, and... I'm sort of okay with that now. While I tried to keep my coverage simple and mention mainly the big hitters from this direct, I did want to give a quick spotlight to some of the games I can't really talk about at long rambling lengths, but looked cool regardless. Gotta prove I actually watched it somehow, I guess. Disney Illusion Island looks surprisingly good. Big sucker for those old fashioned style Disney character designs, so a 2D platformer with that art style is gonna net a pretty big neat from me. Ghost Trick Phantom Detective looked interesting. Never heard of it before, but from what I did see and tried to pick up on, the concept looks pretty cool and something I'll definitely keep an eye on. Dead Cells Return to Castlevania, another game I saw at the Game Awards. If you thought I was a big sucker for those old fashioned style Disney character designs, then you haven't seen me talk about low poly 3D models because oh my god, I could die for those. We love Katamari reroll. You're rolling sh**, this is perfect. This scratches my primal urge for being a dung beetle. I love it. But none of that matters. You want to know why? Nintendo lied to us. In 2022, they remastered Miitopia from a 3DS to the Nintendo Switch. They told us Miis weren't off the table yet, and we still don't have Tomodachi Life on the Nintendo Switch. It's so good, I'm telling you. It just needs like five more hours of content, and then it's good to go. So more progression for your Mii characters, single screen support, more things to do, actual support for gay relationships. Dylan Bruckhoat's cocks. We've been here before. You're charged with breaking and entering into Nintendo's office and vaguely threatening employees with a Nintendo 3DS system? How do you plead? I, like, might not do it again. 